Hi, my name's Sue Olson. I was raised here at Orange County First Assembly. Back then it was Santa Ana First Assembly. My grandparents, Henry, or he was called Gus, and Ethel Cochran were actually charter members here in 1920. And their son, Sam Cochran, is my dad, the founder of Life for the Lost. My dad was obviously raised in a Christian home and accepted Christ at the age of 14, but fell away from the Lord. So I'm gonna fast forward many years after he returned home from World War II, still not serving God, he met my mom, who was a devout Christian, and he started going to church with her. And one night in early 1947, the Holy Spirit dealt with him and he rededicated his life to the Lord 100%. Then again, fast forward a few years, and one Sunday night at these very altars at this church, my dad's life would change forever. During a 1952 revival meeting here with Stanley McPherson, my dad at age 28 began seeking the Lord earnestly about his specific role in winning the lost. He went to the altar to pray for a special touch on his life. And with his hands stretched toward heaven and tears coming down his face, he lay prostrate on the floor, seeking God for over an hour and a half. And that Sunday night, like I said, would change not only my dad's life, but would change the history of evangelism. As he was praying, he said that there was a calmness that came over him, and he said it was like a movie projector playing screens in front of him. He saw a great multitude of people from every nation in the world standing and looking up. And there was a large hand that came down out of heaven holding a Bible. And all the people reached as far as they could desperately stretching their hands toward the Bible in unison and saying, give me the book, give me the book, give me the book. But just as the hand of God came down with the Bible, a trap door opened and dad saw flames and smoke shooting up into the air as people dropped into the screaming pit of a living, burning hell, lost for eternity. Dad heard their cries and their screams, and he said it was so vivid that he could see and smell their hair and their flesh burning. Of course, the vision absolutely chilled him to the bone. And when the vision was finished, he asked God, why did you show me this? He got it from the altar and sat in the front pew with the then pastor, Ben Hardin. He told Pastor Hardin that he didn't understand what he had just seen. After describing the details of the vision, Pastor Hardin said, come back in one year, Sam, and tell me what you've done with what you saw and what you experienced. If you don't do anything, then it was just a good idea and it won't mean anything. Some time passed and after a lot of prayer and thought, the meaning of the vision became perfectly clear to my dad. He knew that God's purpose for his life was to send the word of God to every soul on earth as long as he had breath in his lungs. He had no idea what that mission would look like or how it would be accomplished, but he promised God that he would do his very best. He came away from the altar that night with a renewed dedication, in fact, a burning passion, a burning burden to bring the light of Jesus to the millions in the lost world. That was the beginning of the wonderful missionary literature program, which would come to be known as Light for the Lost and still provides literature to missionaries around the world today through the Assemblies of God. In 1953, Dad and a group of close friends formed a committee and eventually a quartet called the Kingsmen and sang and visited churches to raise money for the literature that would be sent out. If any of you knew my dad or ever heard him speak, he was a larger than life guy with a boisterous voice and a passionate speaker. People caught his excitement and were captivated by his story of his vision. Their first fundraising event was at First Assembly in Anaheim and the offering was $16.66. But dad wasn't discouraged. They continued holding services across the state and eventually the nation. And in 1952, they raised $392. In 1954, they raised $2,163. In 1964, 
they raised $63,870. And in 1974, they raised $631,489. By the end of 2001, when they wrote a book about my dad's testimony and the story of Light for the Lost, Light for the Lost had raised a total of $103,191,000. $546. According to the Light for the Last website today, the $350 million mark is being reached for funds that have been invested in reaching lost souls for Jesus. Dad had an incredible business mind and together with the committee, they came up with an idea to form a councilman program where the men would each give in a set amount each month, I think it was $10 then, to underwrite all of the overhead so that every single dollar that was raised would go towards literature and the mission field. I met a gentleman several years later at district council who when he found out that I was Sam Cochran's daughter, hugged me with tears in his eyes and said, thank you because of your dad and light for the lost literature, I found Jesus. And now I'm a missionary myself and I use light for the lost literature. Praise God. I've heard from missionaries around the world for years how light for the lost literature has helped them bring the gospel to every nation. My dad told us when we were young that he always wanted to be in a missionary anywhere in the world, but God didn't call him to that. Instead, because dad followed God's call on his life to start Light for the Lost, he was able to be a missionary in every nation, in every country of the world. I'm so blessed and I'm so honored to call Sam Cochran my dad. He went to be with Jesus in 2006, and I'm sure he met many people there who came to know Jesus because of Light for the Lost. Like I said, there was a book published in 2001 that tells a story of Light for the Lost called Give Me the Book. If you want a copy, you can reach out to me and I'll get you one. Thank you for letting me share my dad's vision and passion until the day he met Jesus face to face.